Pooter. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Here at the Treehouse, got a Treehouse vlog before you today, and we're gonna be building a setup to take out this backyard farm that has been uh, tearing up the grass. I thought I got it with the possum. If you guys didn't see that video, I did some trapping, <clears throat> trapped a possum. I also trapped a raccoon. I think it was the raccoon that had knocked over some of our, our pots and had been digging into our garbage, getting out Ben's dirty diapers, which is disgusting, and possibly the same one that killed our chickens. Uh, we had an entire flock of chickens last fall get decimated by a raccoon. Uh, there was a possum in, in the coop as well. Uh, lots of varmints running around here. However, we still have a problem with the plants being destroyed and the grass uh, being killed and holes dug in the yard and digging around the house. And so I put out some more trail cameras and I discovered that we have got an armadillo. I like armadillos, I think they're cool. They're sort of like our state pet here in Texas, cool animal, but they do a lot of rooting, a lot of digging, uh, similar to like a, a mole, uh, like their, their little nest that they build, their hives, I don't even know what you call them. Um, they do a lot of digging. I have them all over my deer lease. And in this instance, they're just, they're just digging holes in the grass. They're killing the plants, killing the grass. Uh, even found some uh, digging spots around the, the house area, like trying to get up under the foundation and stuff like that. So it's just, the, the relationship is not working out at this point. I'm pretty pumped today because I just got some new archery equipment in. I've been playing around with it, so let's go get into it. I actually start you guys off on, on a sad note in the traditional archery department. I probably got a few hundred arrows through my snake bow and then it broke. It broke in a weird spot, a spot that I, I really was not expecting it to break, but it was like a little, it was like a little butt crack in the wood. It was sort of weird. Uh, I, I covered it up thinking, I mean, it was a natural part of the wood. It wasn't any kind of mistake that I made. Uh, it was just a weird little, just a little indention um, in the outside bark of the wood. And it just uh, just popped, popped clean right on that spot. So put a lot of work into that bow, and unfortunately, uh, it is no longer with us. Still pretty cool. I think I'm gonna just glue it back together and uh, put it up on the wall or something. So my next trad bow I'm gonna make is sitting down here. I've got a two-year-old. This has been aging two years. Bow dark. That's going to be my next one to replace that snake bow and uh, hopefully be my, my final bow of this year. I, I mean, I'm running out of time to make it and get comfortable with it. And I've got a bunch of other Osage that is almost completely dry now because it's been, you know, 110 every day for two months. And here in the woodworking and tackle cave, we have sort of started turning into, well, a woodworking tackle and archery cave as well. Working on the traditional bows has led me down a path of trying to be a better archer overall with compounds and traditionals. It is so hard to take a tree, make a stick out of the tree, then take another stick and get it to fly downrange straight and accurate and uh, do that in a repetitive, consistent form. So. A lot of respect for it, going down a rabbit hole, trying to learn more, be a, a better archer through that process. Started working on a lot of my own stuff. I like Bowtech bows. I've been uh, working with my friends at Bowtech for a couple of years. They've been sending me some, some bows uh, to play around with. And this year, I'm super excited about a couple of new bows. This is my CP28, 28 inch axle to axle, just a little powerhouse of a bow but this one's going to be really good for the blind and up in the trees and doing stocking and all of that fun stuff. And I would really love to use that uh, to take out an armadillo. I've actually got a, a red light that I can put on the front of this and do some, some night hunting with it, but I don't even have a sight on it yet. And I can't record video that way. That's the most disappointing part. So my buddies at Bowtech, they're sending me these bows and they asked me if I wanted a crossbow from one of their affiliate brands, Excalibur. 
and I was just said no I, I I'm so dedicated it's so hard just to shoot the regular bow I'm gonna stick with that and anyway one showed up at the house and I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do with this and then I started looking at it and I was like wow this is very similar platform to uh, all my other ARs it's already got a Picatinny rail on it and I said oh I've got a infrared night vision scope I can put on there and it turns this baby into a what what is potentially an ultimate backyard um, critter getter that is uh, it's just neighborhood friendly but these things are incredibly simple it is not like working on a compound in fact I'll just show you guys if I just want to take this down real quick you know, you can put this in a backpack even. That's the little nut that keeps everything together. One bolt, and it just comes apart like that. And that's a little bow right there. It's a little bow. Doink. This isn't one of their high-end models. This is the Mag Air right here, but um, I think it's going to be perfect for what we're going to do. You know, it might not be the best at taking down whitetails at 100 yards, but for this, it's going to be the juice. Go ahead and put our bolt back in here. Tighten that up. Now, we need a scope. Okay, I just got done charging this Sightmark Wraith. This is typically what I hog hunt with, and it's an IR scope so it's already set up to pop on here look how easy this is going to be my goodness how about that that's like childhood dreams coming true right there night vision crossbow scope in literally a minute and then what we're going to do to really uh make this thing pop is i've got an aftermarket ir light this is the sniper hog light these things are great so this will actually attach right to the scope itself and we're not going to be shooting very far this is probably going to be less than 20 yards so it's going to be really bright the greatest thing about this is that I can't achieve with the regular bow is uh, I can film it so it's all on video 4k on this some may say well why don't you do it on the on the on the pellet gun that's a that's a good idea as well in fact I've got these big old field rats that have been getting into the chicken coop um, and they've been getting in the side of the house and I'm, I'm charging up the thermals right now getting ready for all-out war with this these rodents around here but I don't have a Picatinny on top of this I need to get an adapter and I'm on, honestly not even sure if, th if that would work on an armadillo because they've got that hard armor shell I mean not quite a turtle but pretty daggum tough 308 would probably get it done but that's not neighborhood friendly and that's why we've got the night vision crossbow okay now it's time to have some fun so we're gonna sight this thing in safety glasses are going on this thing scared me a little bit so hopefully nothing goes wrong nothing explodes and this is currently set for my rifle at 100 yards so we're gonna get pretty close about 10 yards away and see where it hits this is the just crazy part about using these things. They're so, so strong. There we go. Safety on. Okay, we got about, I don't know, it's about maybe 18, 18 yards here. I'm gonna go center. Okay, it's a little high. A little high to the right, so I'm gonna re-zero this. Pretty much dead on. Okay, that's pretty cool. Doing that one shot zero with this, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work with a crossbow, but it seems like it is working really good. So I guess it works on on anything. I'm going to pull those. I'm going to take two shots if we're on. I would say we're good. I'm just going to back it up uh, to about 
20, 30, just see where the drop is, but I can almost guarantee you we're not gonna be shooting past 20, so that should be perfect. Man, this picture in the scope looks really good. Whew, that is bully. This is either gonna be like an upper deck type thing, upper deck shot in this flower bed in front of me, or it's gonna be really close and personal. Yeah. It looks super juicy at 10. Let's see what we got here. Mmm, no complaints. So, yeah, first one was just a hair low, um, just out of the bull, and then at 10, we're just like, you know, a centimeter low on bull. So I think that's a pretty good indicator. Now we just need to back it up and just give myself an idea where I need to aim for elevation if we do have like a 25 yard shot. So it looks like we did about, uh, actually about four inches low, shorter than I thought, on the 25, and then at the 20, we're only like two inches. So that's not bad at all. It's not a bad holdover. You know, basically right out of armadillo's back and then Successful sight in with crossbow. Happy with the scope. I got an SD card issue, so I gotta get that worked out before we do the real deal filming at night next test i really want to test out some broadheads some that i've never used before when i started searching for small game broadheads for crossbows this is what i came up with and it's these these are g5s g5s is literally called the small game head it's 125 grains which is perfect because i can actually screw those in to my regular bow arrows and use those if I want to for shooting squirrels, you know, hunting, whatever, small game. Let's take a look at these. Come on camera, you can do it. I believe in you. Find the focus, you can do it. There it is. So it's like a claw. It is nasty, but something that I like about it, number one is grabby. So it's gonna, it's gonna reach outside, just your standard like stump shooter. Um, but it, it also, it's also going to hook into things, what, which is great for this scenario that I'm in, um, where I don't want my arrow to go too far. You know, I've got like almost two acres here and I don't want my arrow to go shooting off. So this is going to stop the arrow after it passes through or I miss or whatever, it'll hit the ground. Um, and these hooks will dig in and it'll make it flip over. So that's another reason I think these are going to be really fun uh, to shoot. And, you know, if I got some flu flu arrows for my for my compound bow, this would be really fun to go after squirrels and stuff with and trees. But I think that's going to be a, a, a big help for stopping those. And you don't want to lose an arrow or bolt or whatever you call it. Lose a whole broadhead situation. They look dirty, but I want to see what it's going to do. I mean, we're dealing with an armored creature here. I want to see what it'll do to a can. So we'll uh, finish drinking our little midday uh, refreshment here. And then I'm going to fill this back up with some water and take a shot at it, see how it tears this can up. All right, we're setting up likely scenario here. I'll put some water in this. It's an area with, where the armadillo might come right here. Wow, that water is boiling, boiling hot. Jeez. I think the armadillo's nest is either in this side yard or the back corner of the yard. I'm not sure, but this is a likely area, likely scenario. Okay, we're gonna put our can, set our can right here. Okay, that might be 17 yard shot. Pretty good little poke. 
for a can. 18.4, safety on. Eyewear, check. Now this will make it shoot a little bit lower. So it's 25 extra grains. We gotta keep that in mind. We've got a uphill grade, so the arrow should catch and flip over and not go too far. Should I freehand this baby? Let's freehand it. Smoke the can. Let's see if we damage the broadhead at all with all these rocks. Nope. She looks good. That could have been a armadillo could have jumped on that one. Could have got away. But the can is done. I mean it's not it's not terrible. It's uh, less than I would think, honestly. I don't know. Maybe I hit, I think I caught the side and it kind of ripped it. I think that's what happened. But the broadhead looks great. Looks fine. And I, I really didn't see it flip over in, uh, in my purview, but I mean, the arrow did not go far. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Hit the ground, flip over. Not go very, very far at all. Recover the arrow. That's a pretty good test. Okay, it's about to be dark. And we just had one more thing to do, and that was to put this IR light on. So I just mounted it on this little Picatinny mount on the side of the wraith. And it looks good. It's a little heavier now, but most of the weight's right in the middle. It's not end heavy, which is great. This is the nighttime crossbow, night vision crossbow. Might have just discovered a fun new way to hog hunt as well. Um, I'm gonna leave you guys with shooting some arrows into the target at night with the lighted uh, knock arrows, but it's sighted in, it's ready to go, baby. So uh, next time this armadillo comes to play around at night, um, I'm most likely gonna get up when, when Steph is getting up to uh, feed our, our little baby boy. And then um, I'm just gonna do a little searching with the thermos. I'll see that bad boy. It's going down. So without further ado, I give you some nighttime shots with the night vision crossbow. Thank you guys for being here. God bless you. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Sorry about that. Okay, we're locked and loaded. I'm gonna turn our IR light on. It's just barely on. It's giving it a little bit of gas right there. Okay, you can see that target great. Look over here, check out the birds. Birds are sort of standing up. Look a little nervous. I just heard something walking through the brush over here. I don't know what it was. Didn't turn on the IR until just now. All right, we're gonna take our practice shot here. Everything is looking good, night vision wise. Safety off, we're hot. I'm sure there's no other animals back here. Just a deer, faked one. All right, cleared and hot. Sending a nighttime arrow. Bullseye. That's gonna be the game winner right there.